Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and in the last lecture of EC3400 Analog Electronics, we developed a Norton equivalent circuit for looking into the drain of a JFET and a Thevenin equivalent circuit for looking into the source of a JFET. Here we will use the Norton equivalent for the drain to analyze common source amplifiers. I've included a load resistance. This is generally not thought of as part of the amplifier itself. Down here we have a source resistance, and I've included this circuit here for a flexible bypass scheme. Here I've supposed that maybe you don't want to completely bypass the small signal circuit, so I've included this R3 here. If you want, you can set R3 to zero to just put a capacitor here to completely bypass it. And the technique I'm going to show you is easily extended to other kinds of circuitry down here. Here we're assuming we're using a self-bias scheme. This is something you can only do with JFETs, or for that matter, vacuum tubes, where we just have one resistor here. But the techniques I show here can be easily extended to a standard fixed resistor bias scheme, like we use for BJTs. Now, RI here is meant to model the output impedance of the source that's feeding the circuit. We don't think of it as part of the amplifier itself. So we decompose this into a DC bias circuit and an AC small signal circuit. To get the DC bias circuit, you open up all of the caps, whereas to get the small signal circuit, you short out all of the caps. Now, all of the techniques of open circuit time constants and short circuit time constants we looked at to determine the frequency-dependent behavior for BJT-based circuits also apply to FET-based circuits. Now, if you're using a unipolar power supply, so the negative voltage rail is actually at ground, well, then the source is also ground-referenced, so you can emit this coupling capacitor here. We computed the DC bias current for the drain, which is the same as the current for the source in one of our previous lectures. And you can also check out that lecture to see what you do for a fixed resistor bias scheme where we have a resistor going to the positive rail here. Now you may want to double check that this JFET is in saturation, namely the drain to source voltage is bigger than the gate to source voltage minus the pinch off voltage. Now remember the gate to source voltage itself is negative and the pinch off voltage is negative. So this minus VP is positive. It can be a little confusing when dealing with JFETs and depletion mode MOSFETs. We can use this expression for the gate to source voltage in terms of the drain current that we compute and plug that in here. And for the drain to source voltage, well, the voltage at the drain is going to be V plus minus this voltage lost across RD. And the voltage at the source is going to consist of our V minus and the voltage associated with this resistor here, which is ID times RS according to Ohm's law. Now, assuming everything checks out, you can plug ID into these expressions here in order to get our intrinsic transconductance GM and our intrinsic output resistance R0. You may also want to compute things in terms of the intrinsic source resistance RS, which is 1 over GM. So looking at the small signal circuit, remember this JFET symbol now represents a small signal model and not the JFET in its full glory. We're going to employ the Norton equivalent circuit seen looking down into the drain. And in order to figure that out, I need the Thevenin equivalent seen looking out of the gate and looking out of the source. So the Thevenin equivalent voltage looking out of the gate is just going to be VI times RG over RI plus RG, given that we have this voltage divider where we're dividing the voltage across RG. The Thevenin equivalent voltage seen looking out of the gate is going to be RI in parallel with RG, because when I compute a Thevenin, I short this independent voltage source. But remember, there's no current flowing through the gate, so I actually don't need this. This is correct, but it doesn't show up in any of our calculations. This is in contrast to the analogous situation with the BJT and the common emitter amplifier, because there we need to worry about the base current. So there we worry about the resistance seen looking out of the base. 
Now the Thevenin equivalent voltage seen looking out of the source is just zero, and the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen looking out of the source is just RS in parallel with R3. There's other schemes you could use down here, and it's easy enough to replace this RTS with the appropriate calculations for other schemes. So now I can take all this stuff down here and replace it with the Norton equivalent circuit. I can then compute this output voltage by taking my current source here, this IDSC, and multiplying it by these three resistances in parallel according to Ohm's law. I know I need to have a minus sign here because this arrow is pulling current out of the node. The drain current is going to be big GM times VTG minus VTE, but here VTE is zero, so I just have that VTG. VTG itself is equal to the result of this voltage divider. Now I can combine these three expressions to write the output in terms of the input like this. I'm going to take this constant here and call it AV in a later slide. So I just want to give you a heads up on that. Big GM is equal to RTS plus RS, our intrinsic source resistance. Or I could rewrite this as 1 over RTS plus 1 over GM, our intrinsic transconductance. Remember the little RS and little GM are small signal parameters that depend on the drain current, whereas RTS in this case is RS in parallel with R3, which are fixed resistors that are part of our broader circuit. The Norton equivalent resistance RID is given by this expression, although if I want, I could rewrite this using 1 over RS instead of GM. So this looks like a whole lot of stuff. But once you have the quantities, it's really just plug and chug. I'm going to define the output impedance as looking in this direction because we're not considering the load resistance to be part of the amplifier. Well, that's just going to be RD in parallel with RID. That's easy enough. And the input impedance for a FET-based amplifier is even simpler. So here I'm going to define the input impedance as looking in this direction because RI is considered part of our source for the amplifier and not part of the amplifier itself. Remember looking into the gate? Well, that looks like an open circuit. So our input impedance is just RG. And if you had another resistor up here as part of a fixed bias scheme, it would be those two resistors in parallel. For the common emitter amplifier, the input impedance was a lot more complicated because we had to worry about that current flowing through the base. Let's consider some special cases. Suppose that the output resistance of our source is zero, that our load resistance is infinite, and R0 is infinite. In that case, all of this stuff here goes away, and this term here in front goes away, and we wind up with minus GM times RD for our gain. Big GM is 1 over RTS, plus little rs. I can rewrite little rs as 1 over little gm. And let me multiply the numerator and the denominator by little gm to write big gm like this. So in the case where the source is completely bypassed, we set rts equal to 0, and our gain is just the intrinsic gain of the JFET times our drain resistor. But if we do have some source bypassing, and this GM times RTS factor here is a lot bigger than 1, well then this 1 is negligible and the GMs cancel and I wind up with our drain resistance divided by the Thevenin equivalent resistance looking out of the emitter. So we can set the gain using just these fixed resistors so we're less subject to variations in GM. Now you may have noticed that this lecture was quite similar to our lecture on the common emitter amplifier. Let's look at Marshall Leach's notes on the common emitter amplifier. So you can actually take all of these formulas that we computed for the common emitter amplifier and get the associated formulas for the common source amplifier, basically by letting alpha go to one, beta go to infinity, and then making appropriate swaps of the different variables.
No. What if you have a MOSFET instead of a JFET? If you have a MOSFET where the bulk is hooked to the source, then all of the various formulas are the same. If you have one where the bulk is not hooked to the source, then there's a couple of modifications. There's this 1 over 1 plus chi factor that goes in front of your formula for GM. And in this formula for RID, we have this RS prime, where instead of having RS there, we'll have RS divided by 1 plus this chi factor. We'll talk about this chi factor in a future lecture.